Good morning. It is now time for another life lesson from God's Word. Let us pick back up our study in James chapter 2. We're going to start reading in the 21st verse. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. When we look at these verses, it's important for us to understand something. In Genesis chapter 12, starting in verse 1, Abraham was called to go to, a, to leave his father's house and, and go to a country uh, where God would show him. And uh, when we look at that, he was promised. He was promised that his name would be great and would make a great nation out of him. And all, you know, all nations of the earth would be blessed through his seed. And we see this happening. Well, his firstborn son of promise. Now, Ish Ishmael was the son, but he wasn't the son of promise. The son of promise was Isaac. It's gonna, you know, through Isaac, this blessing would, would occur. Now, we go back to Galatians chapter 3, and we find out that the, the true seed which will bless the world is Jesus. But what we find in Abraham is that the promise he had of his name being great and making a great nation and all nations of the world be blessed to receive was pointed on Isaac. He was the fulfillment of the, you know, the beginning of the fulfillment of that promise. And so when, we, when Abraham is called to sacrifice him in Genesis 22, which was by the, as a test, by the way, to see just about Abraham's faithfulness, he was willing to kill his son and expect him to have him back even risen from the dead. And that's what the Hebrews writer talks about in Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, in fact, it goes on to say in which he received him in a figurative sense. Abraham was willing to go the distance with the promised son, knowing that God's word would be faithful all the way to the end. Now notice in verse 23, he believed God and has come to him for righteousness he believed God, but his life changed with that belief. So much so that even if it would have costed Isaac his life, he was willing to show his trust and the belief in what God had told him. And so it, it worked together. So Paul and James are not at odds with one another. Well, they're talking about the same thing. You know, faith, true faith, is living according to how you believe. Some people would call that saving faith. And so that's a type of, of work. You know, faith together with actions is work. Uh, but it's a work of godliness, not a work of merit. See, Abraham did not think he was going to gain anything earthly or even gain heavenly things by that. He was obeying what God had said. And because he obeyed what God had said, he benefited. But he, he, his obedience was focused on this is what God wanted me to do. And then when you find in verse 24, the only two times in all of Scripture, faith and only are put together is in verse 24. You're not saved by faith only or by faith alone. Faith works together or is combined with the, the, our lifestyle. And that, that produces justification. And justification in, in a is is in a sense is a not guilty plea or the idea that we're not hold a, held accountable for our sins because Jesus has already done that. It's an acquittal. And so it's important, you know, so God sees us as if we'd never sinned. And so when we look at faith and works and how they work together, it benefits us because we have a change of life. See, it's the repentance that bears forth what we truly believe. Um, and so it's important for us to really hold on to that. You know, we commit ourselves to God in our at words, our actions, and our beliefs. They all work together. And that benefits us for justification, uh, which also result in our salvation or the deliverance from the penalty of our sins. And so it's important that we live the life that we say we believe we ought to be living. Let us pray this morning. Father, we are grateful again for this day, the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Father, there's a manner of life in which we should live. And sometimes it's really hard for us to live that life, whether it's due to unbelief or due to selfish reasons or 
Sometimes we just don't know how to live that life. Father, we pray to forgive us of our sins. We pray that you will help us to overcome the obstacles in our lives that keeps us from being the people we desire for us to be. We pray, Lord, that you will break our heart from what breaks yours, that we may uh, not desire to do those things which are wrong, which are sinful, which separate us from you, but the desire to do your, do your will and to draw closer to you. Father, we pray in all things that you may help us to bring your honor and glory. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We truly hope that we've been a blessing this morning. If we can help you in any way with your walk with the Lord, please let us know. Feel free to contact us. We'd be glad to hear from you. Come again tomorrow for another life lesson from God's Word.